now she astonished doctors with her ability to detect Parkinson's disease through her sense of smell. And since then, Joy Milne has helped scientists develop groundbreaking research, which they hope could lead to earlier diagnosis. But could other diseases carry a scent too? Well, Dr Chris has been busy investigating. He's here now alongside super smeller Joy. And welcome both welcome, welcome. of you. So, Joy, um, this started with your husband. It was, and you noticed a, a different smell on him. Yes. So what, what, did, what did he smell of before? Uh, he, was, he did like perfumes or deodorants. He just smelt of a nice musky smell of a, a male. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then what did you, what did you smell? I smelt this rather dank sort of uh, heavy musk, uh, which wasn't nice. And you didn't know at the time what that might mean mm -hmm. um, because it was 12 years before he was eventually diagnosed yes. with Parkinson's. Yes. And so how do you get from that, smelling, smelling the musky <clears throat> smell, a new musky smell on your husband, to the point where, hang on a second, this could be a, what is quite a major scientific discovery, and you've, you've, you're finding out that Parkinson's has a smell. We went to our first Parkinson's meeting when we returned home to Scotland. And uh, he wouldn't go to a Parkinson's meeting before that. And I came out of the meeting, got him home, and I said, I think you should sit down. And I said to him, uh, those people smell the same as you. And he went, what? I said, no, no, those other people who have Parkinson's smell the same as you. That's incredible, isn't it? So it's, since then you've been working with scientists to find a connection between odour and the disease. And so what is it that you've discovered? Um, I was able to tell them from the beginning because it was quite funny. There's, they'd gone out running, uh, these uh, PhD students, at that, and I said, no, no, it's not sweat, it's uh, sebum, because uh, it was the, f the forehead through the hair and down the back of the neck. And it's the sebum, it, it is recognised that there's increased sebum in Parkinson's. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Had you already had, did you know you had such a heightened sense of smell? Well, yes and no, I, I, I knew how I smelt, but of course, you don't go around asking people how, how they smell. So I was unaware of the fact it was as heightened as it is. Right. And so do you, do you, uh, are you the sort of person that has a really great library of smells in your head? If you smell something, you think, oh, that's definitely such and such an orange, that's definitely such and such an apricot or whatever. Well, Can you, you see, do I that? Do. I, I realise that now. Um, because my um, library, I did nursing. So Les persuaded me, we were at school together, and Les persuaded me to do nursing. He was going to do medicine. So we, but my Nightingale wards, all the smells there, patients couldn't turn because of those rubber beds. They couldn't put the, the top on a, a, a sputum <coughs> mug or that. We didn't have disposables. We took the bedpans, we emptied them into a sluice, and we washed them. Yeah. So can you smell um, other diseases as well? Do, do they have smells? Is this something that could be rolled out to, to other things? Well, I met uh, the CEO of Apopo, uh, Christoph uh, um, Cox, uh, for TB, and I went out to Tanzania. And I am old enough to have nursed TB. Mm -hmm. And uh, on my way out in the plane, I'm going, mm, white cardboard, brown cardboard, and a bit of brine. When I picked up the first swab, I thought, oh, yes. There it is. So TB That's smells incredible. of wet cardboard and slightly right. briny. Mm -hmm. That's um, incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, Dr Chris, you sort of hear this and it does seem, it seems so incredible. You go, how is this even possible? But yeah. it's, it's working for uh, some uh, reason. Uh, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, I, I mean, Joy is what we'd call a super sensor. You know, sensors are able to detect um, things in very small dilution, like dogs can. Dogs can smell disease. Well, basically, you, you're almost smelling molecules from diseases. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they, they, they've analysed. The sebum is just the... Uh, the oil that's put into the skin and it, patients with Parkinson's do excrete an excess amount and it contains certain volatile compounds that's specific to patients with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you can detect that. And they've used scientific instruments called mass spectrometers to analyse the molecules and found about 10 distinctive molecules linked to Parkinson's but disease. Does that, what does that wow. do for us, that knowledge that you actually picked up and now you would know could be 12 years before Parkinson's is actually diagnosed, what does that help us with? Because Parkinson's is incurable, mm -hmm. so in knowing 12 years before that you, you are going to get Parkinson's, does that do you any good? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to cure it, but certainly, you know, if, if you're alerted that, you know, this is the way, you know, your body is going or your mind is going, etc., then uh, you can de delay the deterioration 
right? Uh, of course, and, and in that time, you can improve your quality of life with early medication, and various other things can be done. Yeah. It, it's the same with dementia, another degeneration. If you know beforehand, you know, th there's time for preparation. Right. Rather than, actually, just out of interest, there are symptoms that occur before the patient's diagnosed, and you know, we, we've heard about Joy smelling. Um, did he lose his sense of smell? Oh, he had lost his sense of smell by the time I was smelling him. Yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's that one of the first mm -hmm. symptoms of Parkinson's. They lose their sense really? of smell. Right. And then they have other symptoms, um, like excessive sleepiness. And he had, he had a... Narcolepsy, yeah. Yes. yeah, before being diagnosed with Parkinson's, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you, um... You say that uh, so tuberculosis has a, has its smell. What about something like uh, cancer or Alzheimer's? I did help a friend last year out in California, and yes, uh, cancer. The dogs have been detecting cancer for quite some time, and yes, it does. It definitely has a smell. It it is a very earthy smell. I I have linked it with something, but I can't really discuss that, yeah. The, um, do, you, do you find yourself in a difficult situation if you sit next to someone on the train or if you're sat here now and you suddenly have this strong smell? I mean, it's quite a responsibility to have that information if somebody doesn't has, is completely unaware of it. It's in the protocols. I cannot do diagnosis. I can't do that sort of thing. Uh, at the moment, it is not allowed. It is not allowed, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And Alzheimer's has a smell? It is a, a vanilla smell. You, you get this sort of beginning of sweet smell and then it goes to a sort of very sort of, again, a, a neurological smell of this dank sort of uh, uh, musky smell. Yeah. And uh, liver disease also? Oh, liver disease is quite, <laughs> quite marked, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Because uh, the bile, you, know, it, you get yeah. that sort of really strong smell. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's called the, the smell of death. The, well, it's usually advanced liver disease where it smells almost fecal. Mm. And, and you, diabetics can uh, emit the smell when they... That's the ketones, uh, the, isn't the it? The ketones, like, yeah. yeah. And yes. it, it, smell, it smells of acetone, mm. nail varnish, oh, really? or pear yes. drops, a sweet smell. Yes. Well, oh, it is fascinating. fascinating. And if anything, like that can be connected uh, with science and be able to make make a difference. What an incredible thing! What a nose so you lovely have. to meet you. Thank yeah, you. It really is. <laughs> Thank, Thank you both very much indeed.